right, so this dark is on focal nodular hypoplasia, and as this implies, it's a focal lesion in the liver, and it's nodular, so it's the perfect terminology. So how did you get here? You decided, one, it was benign, and there's a talk that helps you distinguish between benign and malignant liver lesions, and once you decide it's benign, you have two main choices. It could be either focal nodular hyperplasia or hepatic adenoma, and fortunately or unfortunately, you must make the distinction between these two because focal nodular hyperplasia is often not resected, and hepatic adenoma some are resected, some aren't. It depends on the type and depends on the size. It depends on the surgeon. But that choice is left to the patient and the surgeon. You need to make the distinction between FNH and hepatic adenoma. And if you don't, your surgeon is going to be knocking at your door. Oh my gosh, this is the most perfect gross example of focal nodular hyperplasia. And only if, we, if you've been good Will you ever receive an example as good as this if you have said your prayers at night? And I'm only kidding. So what do you see? You see a central scar surrounded by this nodular-looking liver. So out of context, this really does look like cirrhosis, doesn't it? The other thing I must emphasize to you is that this is a lesion of young women. So do not go about making this diagnosis in older males more often than not, you'll be wrong. The other thing to remember is occasionally these are multiple. So you'll see multiple lesions within a liver. Again, typically in young women. Remember that, young women. So very low power appearance of FNH. Notice the central scar. Remember, if you have a very small lesion, you may not see a scar at all. The scar is surrounded by nodules. These regenerative nodules surrounded by fibrosis. And again, it does look like cirrhosis. Now, occasionally, you'll see these dilated sinusoids. Do not mistake this for a hepatic adenoma. In fact, sinusoids, this dilatation, this telangiectatic dilatation of the sinusoids is more common in an inflammatory hepatic adenoma, but you may see it in FNH. Here's another very typical feature of FNH. Within that central scar, you will see these abnormally large ectatic vessels. I'm not going to go into the pathogenesis of FNH, but it has something to do with abnormal vascular flow, and the evidence for that comes within these vascular channels. Of course, if, you get a, if you're looking at a biopsy, you probably will not capture these large vascular channels. Another very characteristic feature is bile ductular proliferation, this crazy bile ductular proliferation, typically in the septa between those cirrhotic appearing nodules. And here you go. Here they are, this crazy bile ductular proliferation. So the go-to state for a diagnosis of FNH is glutamine synthetase. Now, you've got to know what the glutamine synthetase stain looks like in the normal liver. In the normal liver, it will stain the first four or five layers just outside the central vein. However, it will not stain the stuff around the portal tract. This is what FNH looks like on a glutamine synthetase stain. And this is referred, often referred to as a map-like staining. Now, I've never seen a map that looks like that, but what they're talking about is areas that are strongly positive and then there are areas right adjacent to that that are negative. So this patchwork of positive and negative, that is what is referred to as map-like, and that is essentially diagnostic of FNH. Now, if you don't have the stain, no problem. On a resection, the morphological features are often so characteristic that this is icing on the cake, and we don't really need icing on the cake, do we? So let's look, take another look at an FNH, and let's this time use an example. This was in a young woman. This is a CT scan, and here's the image. And often on these images, I'm left asking the question, can you show me the lesion? I don't really see it. Well, here it is.
very low power view. You see that nodular appearance? Well, I certainly can. Here's a nodule, here's another nodule, here's the nodular appearance. It looks a touch cirrhotic, maybe. So here's the nodularity on high power, nodule separated by septae. I can promise you it's not very obvious here. There's bilateral proliferation, and there are these rather abnormal large vascular channels. This looks a little like a portal tract, but it, believe me, it's not a portal tract. And if you're feeling rich, or at least kind of rich, you can throw a keratin-7 or a keratin-19 stain at this. And what that will do is to highlight the bile proliferation in these septae. Of course, you do not need the stain. You can do this on an H&E stain. And here's the diagnostic immunohistochemistry: chemistry, glutamine synthetate, those areas that are very strong, right against areas that are negative. I will admit that it's somewhat harder to interpret a glutamine synthetase stain on a biopsy. And there have been certainly biopsies in the past where I have found it somewhat unhelpful and have been unable to reach a definitive diagnosis of FNH. And again, a glutamine synthetase stain in a normal liver, I know it looks rather fuzzy, but what I wanted to give you a sense of, this is what glutamine synthetase looks like in the normal liver. It's evenly spread through the liver and that is because it is positive in the immediate hepatocytes around the central vein. And one more example for you, rather nodular looking liver. Here you go again, the nodules with septae. The septae can be inflamed. They do look like portal tracts, but you will not see a bile duct adjacent to an arteriole, something that you will see in virtually every normal portal tract. And there's the map-like staining on a glutamine synthetase stain. In most cases, the differential diagnosis includes just one thing, and that is a benign nodule in the liver, and that benign nodule is hepatic adenoma. And in reality, it's not any old hepatic adenoma. It is specifically inflammatory type adenoma. And I'll tell you why the two of these lesions can look very, very similar. Inflammatory hepatic adenomas can show portal tract-like structures. So you can see where I'm going. So this is an inflammatory adenoma. This is a portal tract-like structure. Notice the arteriole, this bile ductular proliferation, and this inflammatory activity. And to add to that, an inflammatory adenoma may show this patchy sort of glutamine synthetase staining you're stuck and you can't tell the difference between the two, your go-to stain would be SAA or serum amyloid A. And you'll notice here that the adenoma is strongly and diffusely positive for SAA, and there's only focal reactivity in the normal liver. If you don't have the stain, send it across to me and I'll work it out. That said, I will admit that the SAA stain is somewhat of a tricky stain to perform. So it works in most cases, but may not work in all the cases. Here's the cheat sheet that I carry at the back of my head. I'm a simple guy. I will carry only a few features at the back of the, my head, the few features that work. So FNH typically is associated with that central scar, that large vascular channels. Of course, on a biopsy, you, you may see neither of these. And so you're very much dependent if the morphologic features are not characteristic, to make the distinction between the two, you are dependent on immunohistochemistry. And the one thing you, I'd like you to remember at the end of this talk, if you don't remember anything else, it is the presence of a map-like staining on glutamine synthetase that is characteristic of focal nodular hypoplasia. And as always, thank you for listening. I do appreciate your support. Thank you and good night.